What is going on everyone and welcome back to Intro to Web Development episode 5. In this episode we are going to talk about basic text formatting. Now it may be hard to believe, but in tutorials 3 and 4, the ones that you guys just watched, you basically just went through all the hard stuff about learning HTML. If you know what a tag is and how attributes of tags work, you're going to have a breeze going through these tutorials. All it is is learning more and more tags and getting a lot of practice in. So let's get to basic text formatting. Now I have a blank document here, I've already saved it as textformatting.html, so go out, create a new text document, and try and create the basic parts that we need for a website, like the body tag, the head tag, and the HTML tags. Try and do it from memory, if not, you can follow along with me of course, but keep doing it. Every tutorial, start with a blank document and keep writing the base code of an HTML site, because that's going to get it in your mind and you're going to be able to remember how to code a site from scratch more easily. So, the first thing we need is, of course, the doc type tag. So, doc type HTML, because we're using HTML version 5. We're going to open up the HTML tag, and remember to close it at the end. And we're going to give it the lang attribute, and I'm going to plug in en for the English language code. Then we need the head tags, of course, because the head tag is where we put important information. So, I'm going to plop in the title within the, uh, the head tags, and I'm just going to name this text formatting, like so. And then... Really, for practice, you don't have to do this, but I do recommend that you do it so that you don't forget when you create a real website. I'm going to add in a meta tag, so meta name equals, and I'm going to do the author, and then content is going to equal, and then code and more, my name, like so, and it doesn't have a closing tag. That's all I'm going to put in there for now. You can, of course, add the description meta tag and other things. Then, the most important part of our website, the body tag, because this is the actual part of our website that is seen. There we go. You hopefully did this on your own and created the basic template of a website. So every single video until say tutorial 15, start with a blank text document and try and make the basic HTML code from your memory. You're gonna be able to learn the code much more easily and much quicker and be able to recreate it without looking at any resources. So practice makes perfect. Now let's get into what we're gonna be learning today. Now all of the text formatting tags and everything text formatting that we're gonna learn in these few tutorials is going to go in between the body tags because the body part is our website and it's the only part that actually supports text formatting, of course, the part of the website that we can see. So let's start by getting some basic text onto the screen. To do that, you guys already know how. You just write the text right in between the body. So I'm just going to write, hello, YouTube, like so. And I'm going to add a break tag. Remember, the break tag gives me a new line, and I'm going to write second line below it. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and save this, and then I'm going to go into my web browser and open up the document. I'm going to refresh it, and here I have hello, YouTube, and second line. Now we already know how to do all that, but this is so boring. If you're going to create a website that just has a bunch of text like this, it's going to be the worst website ever. It doesn't look good. You don't even have a good big title at the top. So we have to learn how to do that. Now there's one specific tag that I want you guys all to take out of this tutorial, and it's called the paragraph tag. It's a great way about organizing all of your text. Now the paragraph tag isn't really going to change the look of our website that much at all. You're not going to notice much of a change when we begin using the paragraph tag, but we are going to get in the habit of using using it because when we learn more about text formatting and styling our web page, the paragraph tag is going to come in really handy and it's going to allow us to do more things. And you should use the paragraph tag because it's easy to organize big blocks or paragraphs of text. So the paragraph tag is simply the letter P, so I'm going to have the opening and closing paragraph tag, and you can have as many of these on your web page as you would like. Now in between the opening and closing paragraph tags is where you would write a big block of text or a paragraph of text for your website. Now I'm not actually going to write a paragraph here, I'm just going to write a few lines of code, So, or I'm sorry, text, so I'm just going to say text here, and maybe copy that a few times just so we have a bit of length to it, like so. Now this, as I said, isn't going to change our web page very much. If you save it, go into your web browser and refresh it, it doesn't look different at all. It's just a big line of text that says text here. But the paragraph tag actually has something kind of cool. If we take this paragraph tag and copy another one below it, so we have uh, this paragraph tag, then I'll say uh, uh, two here, just to, to make it a bit different. So we have a paragraph up here, it just says a bunch of text here. Then we have a paragraph below it, and it says two here, and then a bunch of text. Now if you save this and view your website, you're going to notice something kind of cool. The second paragraph is placed on a separate line, and there's a bit of space between the two lines. That is what the paragraph tag also does. 
We didn't use a break tag anywhere in our code, but whenever you create a new paragraph, it's going to automatically put a new line in it for you and it's going to kind of double space the two paragraphs. So that is what the paragraph tag changes on your website and we're going to get much more use out of it in the future. But the paragraph tag essentially just used to write your paragraphs or large blocks of text in. Now that was really boring, so let's get into some actual stuff that we can see some big changes on. Now I'm just going to go ahead and delete these two paragraphs here, and I'm just going to create another paragraph. This will just be easier for you guys to see. Now text formatting is changing the way that text looks on the screen, the way that text is being displayed to the screen. We are going to learn how to underline text, how to make italicized text, how to bold text, and how to make strike through text. So we're going to start with underline. So this is underline, like so. Now, say that I only want the underlined word here to be underlined, not that this is or the exclamation mark, just the word underlined. I want that to be underlined. Well, there's actually two ways that we can do this. The most common method is to just use the U tag. So we have the U tag here, and then we have to close the U tag where we no longer want underlined. So anything in between the opening and closing U tags, or the opening and closing underline tags, will be underlined text. So this is, is going to be normal text, then we open up the U tag and write the word underlined, that will be underlined, and then we have an exclamation mark at the end. If you save this and go into your web browser and refresh it, we have this is underlined, and the underlined word, the part that was in between the opening and closing U tags, is underlined. That's awesome. That's one step towards getting good text formatting. Now there is another tag that does the exact same thing as the underlined tag. It's called the insert tag, so INS. So we have the opening INS tag. Let me get my mouse here. We have the opening INS tag, then the word underlined, then we have the closing INS tag. This is the exact same thing as the underline tag. If we open up our web page and refresh, it looks the exact same. I'm not entirely sure why there's two ways to do this, but just for your future reference, you may see the U tag or the INS insert tag to underline text. I'm probably just going to stick with the U tag for the duration of this tutorial series. Now I'm going to go ahead and create a new line, so I'm going to put a break tag in here, and then I'm going to put this is bold. Now we're going to learn the bold tag. The bold tag works exactly like how the underline tag works. So I just want the bold word right here to be in bold. So right before the word bold, I'm going to open up the B tag. And right before the exclamation mark after the word bold, I'm going to close the B tag. So anything in between the opening and closing B tags, such as this word bold, is going to be bolded. Again, it works just like the underline tag. If we go ahead and save this and we go into our web browser, refresh the page, we have bold here. As you can see, just the part that was in between the two bold tags is bold, or a little bit darker. Now just like the underline tag, for some reason, they also have the strong tag. So instead of the bold tag, you can have the opening strong and the closing strong tags, and this is going to do the exact same thing as the bold tag. Go ahead and refresh it, nothing changes. So you might see strong, or most commonly, you're going to see the bold tag, just the letter B. Let's go ahead and create a new line here, break tag, and then we're going to put this is italics. I did not spell that right. Italics. This works the exact same way as the underline and bold tags. Simply, it's the letter I. So the letter I, and then we're going to close the letter I. So we have italics. Anything in between the opening and closing I tags, or the italics tags, is going to be in italics. Go ahead, save your document, go into your web browser, refresh it. As you can see, the word italics is italicized, or it's a little bit slanted. And again, just like the other two tags, for some odd reason, you can also use the EM tag. And I believe you're actually going to see the EM tag a little bit more often than the I tag. But EM stands for emphasis, and it's going to do the exact same thing as the I tag. EM is going to simply emphasize or italicize the text. Nothing changes. I'm going to leave it at I, however. Let's learn the final piece of text formatting for today. We're going to have the break tag, and we are going to learn this is strike through text. I, I completely butchered that spelling. Strike through text. Now, I want all three of these words, strike through text, to be strike through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the S tag and close the S tag where I want to stop striking through. Again, it works the same exact way as the other tags. Anything in between the opening and closing tags will be affected. It will be strike through. Refresh the page, and we have this is strike through text. As you can see, there's a line going through it. That's what strike through does. And like the other tags, 
Instead of the S tag, you can also use the del tag. So open the del tag, close the del, del tag, the delete tag, and if we go into our web browser, nothing changes at all. It looks the same. And again, I'm gonna leave that as the S tag. Now there's one extremely important thing that we must also learn. I'm going to pop in two break tags here, just to go down two lines, and I'm going to show you guys how to nest text formatting tags. So say I want to underline, bold, and italicize something. We're gonna say this is a bunch of text formatting, like so. And I want a bunch of text formatting right here, this text that is highlighted, to be both underlined, bolded, and in italics. So at the beginning here, I'm going to open up the bold tag, I'm going to open up the italicize tag, and I'm going to open up the underline tag. Now to do this properly, to properly nest tags, and what I mean by nesting tags is essentially using multiple tags within other tags, is that you have to close them in the opposite order. I opened up the bold tag first, then the italicized tag, then the underline tag. That means I have to close the underline tag first, then the italicized tag, and then the bold tag. Now even if you did this out of order, most web browsers will still display it properly, but this order of when you open and close tags comes in very important when we move on to more advanced HTML topics. So I hope that this tutorial wasn't too bad. Go ahead, experiment, make a bunch of paragraphs with much more text. Make sure you understand all the underlined bold italics and strike through stuff and try and make multiple text a bunch of uh, text formatting. And I don't even think I ran this, did I? Go into your web browser, run it, and here we have a bunch of text formatting. It's bold, underlined, and italics. So. This is great. We learned four main key concepts of text formatting as well as the paragraph tag. Thanks for watching everyone. In the next tutorial, we're going to be doing a little bit more text formatting, so I'll see you guys then, and thanks for watching.